I'm very happy to be here today um, to talk about the democratization of Taiwan and uh, her place in the world and uh, from uh, the view of international relations. Um, my name is uh, Wu Zhizhong and uh, actually I, I am an assistant professor at uh, Dongwu Daxue but the English name is uh, Suzhou University uh, that I don't like it because you can find also the same university in China. So, and uh, the problem is uh, every time uh, when um, uh, our foreign, foreign friend can, can come to Taiwan and uh, when they ask me where I teach, if I tell them that I teach at Suzhou Daxue, for them it's very difficult for the future to, uh, to find my university. So I prefer to use uh, Dongwu Daxue, University Dongwu. And um, I graduated from uh, Paris University in 1998, uh, five years ago. And then I passed uh, one year in US, uh, Boston, to, be a to, to do a postdoc at Harvard University. And I spent 10 years in, in France, so normally my French is much more better than my English. Uh, and, uh, to <laughs> and uh, to speak frankly, it's the first time that I use English uh, to give a speech for a so long time, for two, uh, two, two hours, I think. Normally because uh, I, we can speak, I can speak English um, uh, very, uh, very, very normal when we have a conversation, but to give a speech in English, it is really my first time. First time. So <laughs> if my English is not so good, uh, please uh, uh, excuse me. And, uh, if you uh, understand French, maybe I will have a French <laughs> accent. <laughs> so t today, um, we will talk about the uh, democratization of Taiwan and uh, her place in the world. Um, I prepare many. Uh, we will begin. We will begin from the the, uh, the base knowledge, because uh, when I, this. Uh, this presentation I already made it, uh, many times uh, uh, to my uh, Taiwanese student and uh, to all the, um, uh, the young people in Taiwan. And uh, many point of view, even for them who live in Taiwan, is uh, very new. I don't know for you whether it be the same thing or not, but try to, to know, um, to try to understand, understand Taiwan with another point of view. So the first question when, even for Taiwanese student, as you know, that many times we receive a Chinese education. Uh, we, uh, we learn a Chinese uh, geography and a Chinese uh, history uh, when, we, uh, when we grew up. So the first question, where is Taiwan? This is very normal. I think uh, this map uh, have nothing different. But just to give you a very quick idea uh, where is uh, our country. But at the same time, how can we see the world? We know Taiwan is there, but if we don't use a traditional uh, way to see the world, how can we see the world? This map is a map that normally we find in Taiwan, in China, or in Japan. Um, there is nothing different. But when we live here, when we go to United States, you can find the map is totally different. And that will, chi that will change our point of view. Of course, I know that you already, uh, uh, you already know this kind of map. But try to understand when you are in US, in the US, and when you are in Taiwan or in China, how you can see the world. And the most tra traditional uh, point of view of the map is when you are in France. You know, in using in, in France or in in in, uh, in uh, U.S. No, in the, in uh, Spain or in Europe, with this point of view, you can find the reason why we call um, why we call um, uh, how to say in exclam how uh, in uh, why we call uh, East Asia. It means that this you have a European central view. You have a European central view when you are here. So uh, when you see Japan, Asia, it's a very, very far, uh, very far uh, place for, for them. Uh, in, in, in French, uh, you can call here Extreme Orient, the Orient, which is very, very far. It's not, it's, it's not an Asia-centric point of view, Asia-centric point of view. So when you change the place, uh, 
the world is completely different. I don't know if, if you see if, if, if you uh, know this map. Which one already uh, see this map before? Very nice, uh, very nice. Not so many people see this map before. This map is a uh, Russia central point of view. And uh, if you use this map, it's very useful to know the containment policy of the US in the Cold War. Why? You have US here. Can, can you uh, identify immediately where we are? Where is Taiwan? Here? There, isn't it? And uh, which country is here? The US. OK, it's very good. Some Taiwanese, <laughs> because they have never seen uh, this map, cannot find where is the US. So you can find a very close relation, military relation between US and Canada. Here, you can find NATO. And here, on the path, you can find a, 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 central, a, a central military alliance between Iraq and the US and Iran on the path. Of course, now it doesn't exist anymore. And here, you can find the Seattle Southeast, uh, Seattle Southeast Asia Military Alliance, also on the path that it doesn't exist, actually. And here, you can find the military alliance between Japan and the US, and the US. Of course, South Korea, don't forget. And on the path, also the uh, military alliance, alliance between the US and the Taiwan. The Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Australia, New Zealand. If you are the, if you are the, U, uh, the, US, the USSR and the China, essentially the USSR, you will find to be contained by the US. It's very normal. So on the path, you can find that the USSR try to find, to create uh, some trouble in Africa, in Central, Central, uh, uh, Central, uh, Amer uh, sorry, sorry. in America Central, Latin America, and even in Malaysia, in Philippines, in Indonesia, you can find so many communist revolution. Why? When you fight uh, face to me, if I'm not strong enough to, fi to fight to you, I always try to find another friend after you <laughs> to, to, give to bother him. So it's very, very easy to understand the containment policy of the US on the past. And I think it, with this point of view, all the revolution made by the made by the Russia made by Russia can be justified. It's not only it's not only a, a, a point of view of the U.S. And what is this one? Don't turn your head. Uh. It's just a normal look. Universal credit map of the world. It's a point of view of Australia, because <laughs> normally. You know, normally, all the point of view is from the country of, from the northern country of the world. And normally, as everybody understands, Europe, uh, USA, Can USA, Canada, even Taiwan, China, was on the north of the, on the Earth. So those countries of the south of the Earth find themselves, find themselves marginalized by the world. How to change their point of view? And when you use this map, of course, Australia became, became the, become the center of the world. It's not, it's not so bad for Taiwan, if you find. We are here. <laughs> and uh, we control the, uh, the weight for, for, uh, for Australia, for, all, for everyone to enter the mass of the Eurasia. You, so uh, it's not so bad. And uh, you can find that every point of view is different. And now, from a Taiwan perspective, what is the world? Look, this is Taiwan. We are in the center. And in using this map, you can find which country is the farthest country from Taiwan. It is South America. It is Australia. And then you can find that, uh, not Australia, it's, uh, it's South America and uh, Africa. So from this point of view, what it can create for us? I mean, if we can change uh, the situation of Taiwan, just only we turn the map. I don't think so. But 
it can change our point of view and uh, give us some com confidence. And the most important thing that we can change uh, we, in making our uh, foreign policy, we can have new consideration and find uh, which country is, uh, more, is, is more important for Taiwan. You know, on the past, uh, Taiwan, in, of course, the US is the most important country for Taiwan, but Taiwan in your so many Southeast Asian countries, they are our neighbor. For many Taiwanese people, when we go outside, it, just, it is just uh, the US or Europe or um, uh, go to the Arabia, Arabian country, but not uh, the Southeast Asia. So I, I think on the past, uh, Taiwan don't pay uh, very much attention to Southeast Asia. And according to according some theory, Taiwan also has a very strong relation with the civilization of the island of the South Pacific Ocean. Taiwan is the source of the culture of the, this, of the immigration that, that go to South Pacific Ocean. We have some, uh, we have some um, uh, archaeological pr proof that those people who live here, here, have strong relation with Taiwan. The most important thing is several years, uh, uh, several years on the past, uh, some fishermen from Philippines, uh, uh, no, some fishermen from Taiwan just lose their control of their boat and uh, uh, was refugee in the Philippines. And in you, this fisherman was the aborigine of Taiwan. In using their native language, they can communicate with the people of Philippines. So it's very interesting. Also, there are some many tradition of the aborigine of Taiwan uh, is similar than the uh, tradition of the uh, island of the people of the island of uh, uh, South Pacific Ocean. And how about the relation between Taiwan and China? You can find that many body think that we are very near to, uh, to China. But the nearest point between Taiwan and China was um, is, uh, uh, I think, 180 kilometer. Do you know the, the the um, distance between uh, England and uh, France, the nearest distance at Calais is 30 kilometer. It's only 30 kilometer. So Taiwan, uh, ta Taiwan is not so near to China as we imagine. But in fact, comparing to, for example, England and uh, and uh, France and uh, Europe, is very far. In standing to, uh, at the Galay in France, uh, you can see uh, England, but never in Taiwan. Even you are here, you cannot see China, except you are in uh, Jinmen or Mazu, where I, I made my military service. It's very near, only two kilometers. <laughs> so I was very afraid at the time. Every time we see a, a big uh, a destroyer of China, and we never see our destroyer because it's too near to China. So it's a very, very, it's a very, very um, good experience. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. And then from a strategic point of view, when you see China, or when you see Taiwan, why China insists that Taiwan is a part of China? It's not only from a historical point of view. I will explain after if it is true or not, if it is a myth or not. But also from a strategical point of view. Look, when it is in deep blue, it means that the ocean is very, very deep. All here is for China, for Chinese point of view, it's not the ocean, but only the sea. Uh, uh, I think several months ago, we received a, a scholarship from China. And uh, he told us, uh, only in standing at Taiwan, in Aranbi or in Taidong, they see what means the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. To be in only in the side of China, they can only see the sea. And in fact, the most important thing is the submarine. Only in to establish a base of submarine here, then they can leave Taiwan and then not to be detected by the U.S. military. Every, for for the between China and Taiwan and for all the side of China, the sub the submarine activity is easily detected by the US and the Japan. So if they can take Taiwan and uh, have a military base in Taiwan, for them, 
just it just open their it just open their their strategical uh, thinking or their uh, their way to go to the Pacific Ocean, and then the most important thing also they can control the South China Sea. Do you know that eighty? I think more than eighty percent, near to nineteen percent of the resource of Japan pass by the Taiwan Strait and the Barsha Strait. So if China can control Taiwan, imagine how China can threat Japan. And uh, if you uh, know the Chinese uh, uh, point of view concerning Japan, until now, they cannot for forgive what Japan has done to China on the Second World War. So in controlling Taiwan, it is a very important strategic um, uh, think, uh, um, uh, thinking for, for China. Finally, why Taiwan is always under the pressure of China? <laughs> I make a mistake. Thinking the place of Taiwan with another perspective again. So here, quickly, where is Taiwan? Who tell is here? And here you have Australia. Here you have China. You have Japan here and South Korea, North Korea, Russia. Very qu quickly, who to who tell us that we always need to see China on the left, on the uh, up to Taiwan, and we always need to be down to China? Who, why? Why we always need to see the world like that? It's just because education tell you and. Uh, and uh, uh, we, 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 we used to see the world like the map I showed you uh, before. In this way, you can find Taiwan even can lead China. Why not? Taiwan can be also the top of Asia. It's not, I just turned the map to the most important thing for, for Taiwanese people, the people who live Taiwan here. Because as you know, many people here have not have not have not self confidence. So in in using this map, you can find that we can find a new world. From this point of view, the ocean is just in front of us, uh, and we can go to a new world, find a new world. Just psychologically, we can change our mind. But the most important thing, in changing the map, we see a different world. I think which is very important uh, for for the people who live here. And maybe for you also, <laughs> if you never think that Taiwan can be placed on this uh, point of view. So we we go back we go back to uh, um, um, we go back to uh, the history. Is Taiwan a part of China? For example, Time just give a special report to say what one Taiwan, and uh, in use this map it is it is to demonstrate that Taiwanese people Taiwan won to leave Taiwan and uh, create our new future. But this kind of thinking is based on Taiwan is a part of China on the past. Is this true? What does history tell us? This is the Han Dynasty, a very big dynasty of China from 2006 BC to uh, two, uh, 220 AD. You can find in this map, is Taiwan a part of China? Taiwan is not a part of China. I use I use an a, a Encarta uh, encyclopedia of a Microsoft because it's very easy to take it. But I have another uh, uh, data to demonstrate that. But in Han Dynasty, dynasty, clearly Taiwan is not a part of China. What about how about another dynasty? Look, the Sui Dynasty. This is the first time that uh, in uh, in our historical book that teach us that Taiwan is a part of China. Why? Because Sui Dynasty sent someone to Taiwan. And they find oh, there is, it exists a very beautiful island not very far from China. So according, just according to this sentence that we send someone to Taiwan then to prove that Taiwan is a part of China. But clearly we can find in, in the real, in the true history, Taiwan is not a part of China. In the Tang Dynasty, that everyone knows very well, it is, a, it is a glorious period of China, the Tang Dynasty. And again, we can find no book exists 
to say that Taiwan is a part of China. And uh, we can find it clearly in the historical map that Taiwan is not a part of China. This is the Ming Dynasty. This is the Ming Dynasty. After I will talk about the relation between Taiwan and China in the Ming Dynasty. The most important thing is that in 600 said, Sui Yang Di sent Zhu Kuan to, um, uh, to find or to visit Liu Qiu, the name of Taiwan at the time. This is the only sentence to prove that Taiwan is a part of China. But to visit a place in Han Dynasty, um, uh, I think it's Han Wu Di also sent someone to Rome to have some exchange. Can you say that Rome is a part of China? If you just send someone to visit a place and uh, immediately you claim uh, that this place belongs to you, I don't think it, it can convince, uh, convince us. It is until in 1544 that the Portuguese uh, found Taiwan and called the island Formosa. So everyone just know, know that, uh, Ila Formosa to say that Taiwan is a beautiful island. And uh, also many people here just make a mistake uh, in thinking that uh, uh, Portuguese, uh, the Portuguese uh, uh, occupied Taiwan at the time. It's not true. It's the same thing, just like Chinese. Uh, they found Taiwan and they call that uh, Taiwan as, uh, as the name of Formosa. That's all. Maybe they stop at Taiwan, uh, Taiwan to have some water but they never really occupy Taiwan. But Formosa, the name of Formosa is from uh, Portugal. Yes? So can it be said on another one? Can I have some water? Please, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying this is what I'm going to say is right yeah. or anything, but yeah. could it be said at that time that if a civilization visited what they thought was a relatively uninhabited civilization, mm. that they could claim it, similar to what happened in the United States, uh, when travelers, Lewis and Clark, wherever, went out. In, you know, they disregarded Aborigine rights and all, but they claimed parts of the territory by purely visiting it. Um, but, the, sorry, I know that, but you need to, you need to, uh, you need to, uh, you need a process, for example, you need to say to your, uh, to your king that you find this place and uh, you uh, you put your flag there and uh, you say to other people that now this place belongs to us. But it is not what China done in Sui, in, Sui, uh, in the dynasty, dynasty Sui. And it is uh, neither for the Portugal to, to do that. They just uh, sailed to, to Taiwan Strait and found. And then they, to they told to uh, Europe that we found an island, but they never claimed that Taiwan, uh, uh, Taiwan at the time, for most at the time, belonged to Portugal. I agree with you for some example. If this place is uh, in a bit, uh, but at, at that time also Taiwan was, you have so many aborigines there. So it's, not, it's also not so easy to occupy Taiwan. You, you should know that uh, even uh, in, when Japan took control in 1890, 1895, it takes one year for a modern army to really occupy Taiwan. In 1895, Japan took Taiwan um, in, uh, according to the Shimonoseki um, uh, Treaty. Uh, the Qing Dynasty just abandoned Taiwan. But it also took one year for Japan to control Taiwan. And then it took another 10 to 20 years to really control Taiwan because Japan also found so many resistant inside Taiwan. But it's not only the problem of Japan. Qing Dynasty was faced with the same problem. Holland uh, was faced with the same problem. And uh, even uh, the Kosinga, Zheng uh, Chenggong, uh, is faced with the same problem. So uh, I, we need a, f a, a formal uh, declaration to say, actually, and uh, even to send, the most important thing is to send a government, to send a governor to establish uh, in the place and to say now, and uh, the most important thing, of course, is to, say, is to send an army to, pro to protect the place. In, in 1092, Japanese pirates occupied Danshui, the north of Taiwan, and the Jilong. Uh, but again, at the time, uh, Japan is not really um, 
uh, with a, a, a nation state as we uh, as we understand actually. So it's just some pirate. It's not a formal army of uh, the Japanese government. Uh, they was there and uh, they occupied Taiwan. They occupied Taiwan. That's all. Sorry? Is that when Taiwan got its name? No, not, a, not yet. The name of Taiwan is from Da Yuan, a big circle. And uh, it, it is, it is, the name uh, of uh, Da Yuan is from uh, the Dutch, uh, I think the period of the Dutch uh, occupation. But even at that time, Taiwan, the name of Taiwan is not, uh, is not uh, uh, Taiwan. Uh, it's, not, it's not only Formosa. For example, in six, uh, it's 1622 Dutch uh, Admiral Cornelis uh, Hedges uh, try or uh, try to build a military base at Taiwan, but but faced with the problem, I I I I, to, I just told you the resistance of the population of the local population he failed. After the war between Holland and the Ming, Ming just said, okay, you, you, they have a dispute about the uh, Penghu Island. Penghu Island at that time was a part of Ming Dynasty. And uh, Holland tried to defeat Ming, but n w the result, uh, the history told me the result is that the Ming dynasty defeat Holland. But the result is that the two, the two empires abandoned Penghu Island. And Ming dynasty ju just told to, the, uh, to Holland that leave uh, Penghu Island. And uh, you, you can take control of Taiwan, because Taiwan is not a part of Ming dynasty. So, Dutch uh, took control of Tainan and named the city as Orange. And uh, it is only after 1627, uh, 1627 that the Dutch finally named the fortress Zealandia. And uh, so at that time, the name of Taiwan, you can say that geographically, the name of Taiwan is Formosa. But the official name of Taiwan at that time is Zealandia. And uh, it is the first government of Taiwan because Holland sent a governor in Taiwan and sent an army to protect, to protect their interests and, uh, um, and uh, to protect the, um, the fortress of Taiwan. But we should not also not forget in 1626, the Spanish also occupied the east of the island and called it Santiago and uh, began to build the city of uh, San Salvador. And this name, we still find this name now in Taiwan because in in Taiwan, the north of Taiwan, we can find a place. What is the name? San Diao Jiao. Which, who, which comes from the name San Diao Jiao, Santiago. So it is a Spanish name. You can find San Diao Jiao just not far from, not very far from Taipei. So you can find two European empire came to Taiwan, took control of Taiwan, sent their army, sent their governor to Taiwan, and really claimed Taiwan as a part of their their empire. So this is the first time. In 1642, Spanish was defeated by the Dutch and they left Formosa after 70 years of occupation. 16, uh, in 1661, after 38 years of occupation, the Dutch was defeated by Kosinga. You know who, do you know who is Kosinga? Zheng Chenggong. And then in 1683, uh, the, king, the kingdom found by Kosinga was defeated by the Qing dynasty. And uh, it is since that time that Formosa became a part of the Qing di dynasty. And then we have the name of Taiwan. The Taiwan became, uh, uh, became uh, um, a, a, a word uh, using by the people uh, in, uh, in Taiwan and uh, in, in, uh, in the Qing dynasty. And then in 1684, Prohibition for the Chinese to move to Taiwan declared by the Qing Dynasty. Why? Because Qing Dynasty just don't think Taiwan is a part of China. It's so far why we, we need to occupy to Taiwan. They don't like a, a place so far. And, uh, there are so many problems in Taiwan. Uh, we got sick. Uh, we, can, we cannot win uh, money. Why? And uh, we have a so big territory of China. Taiwan is so small. Why do we need to take care of Taiwan? So even Qing Dynasty prohibited uh, the Chinese to move to Taiwan. 
And then it is only in 1895 when the Qing Dynasty was defeated by Japan. In accordance, in accordance with the Shimonoseki Treaty, Formosa became a part of Japan. And now we enter the modern history of, uh, of, of Taiwan. Taiwan was a part of Japan at the time, in 1894. It is signed by a treaty. For after 40, uh, after 50, 50 years, Japan was defeated in the, in the World War II, in the Second World War, uh, faced with the, uh, uh, the the nuclear bomb of the U.S. But if you need to give again a part of your territory to another one, you need to sign another treaty. So China took control of Taiwan, just because China is a part of the alliance of the U.S., uh, uh, England, and France. And even if you find the constitution made by uh, uh, wrote for, for the Republic of China in 1960, in 1936, that we call the 5-5 constitution, they list the territory of China. And Taiwan is not a part of China. In the four, in the uh, uh, in the four, um, um, uh, in the four article of the constitution, you can find find uh, the constitution of the Republic of China in 1936. We call Wu Xian Chao. Taiwan is not part of China. They list that every territory. But ev the hi when the history uh, uh, move is never, what we can imagine. 1947, we have the 28 February incident. I think you know also very well. And uh, in 1949, the Republic of China moved to Taiwan. So. Today, we are in year in 2004. Since 1895 to 2004, for 100 years, Taiwan was only controlled by China for four years. Four years. Taiwan was only controlled by Taiwan. And it's a control. It's, even, it's, even, it's not a part of, of China. And then you can find that the Republic of China moved to a territory that don't belong to the Republic of China and, create, and uh, to exist and to continue to have uh, her existence. So the truth of the history is that um, some to be more radical, that Taiwan has never been a part of China, because when we call China, it's pure Chinese, is Han. And the Qing is not Han. But if you forget the, the, um, uh, the difference between the Manchu and Han, is it true that Taiwan has been a part of China, but it is a very Long, very far, uh, far away history. It's not the modern history, and uh, even for the government, which is now in China, the People Republic of China, People Republic of China, they never took control of Taiwan. Did the Qing Dynasty officially declare Taiwan Sorry? as a province? Ta 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 Did the Qing Dynasty at, at the end of yeah, the yeah. 19th century? At the end of the Qing Dynasty, why? Because in, uh, I think it is in uh, 1889, uh, now I'm not so sure for the date, but just uh, so several years before China was defeated by Japan, um, France uh, tried to take control of Taiwan. They, um, uh, we have a, a, a battle in, uh, in the uh, Jilong and the Penghu. So still now you can find, in, uh, especially in Jilong and Danshui, a, sim, a cemetery um, uh, uh, of uh, the uh, French, uh, French soldier who was dead in, in, in the war. And um, when France tried to take control of, uh, of, uh, of Taiwan, they have war with Qing Dynasty. China, for her part, declared that uh, this is the only war that Qing Dynasty win. For friends, uh, they don't lose the war. We don't know what is the uh, what is the truth, but the result is that uh, that uh, friends uh, retreat uh, from Taiwan and uh, took control of what Indochina, Vietnam. Friends said that if we lose the war, why Qing Dynasty give us uh, give to friends uh, 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 Indochina? And uh, the, from from the point of view of China, it's because we defeat you, so you leave uh, Taiwan. But France took control for several months, uh, uh, Danshui and Jilong, for several months, very, a very short period of time. So 
after the war between France and, the, and the China, China become to think that the, uh, Taiwan is very important face uh, to the invasion of the European uh, empire. So uh, they, they promote Taiwan to be a province of China. And they send a, a, a government to Taiwan. So it's not a very long period, but it's already too late for, for China. When he, they, they began to, uh, to think, uh, to, uh, to find the important, the strategic importance of Taiwan. They, immediately they lose the war against uh, Japan and they lose Taiwan. Okay? I, just, um, so, just going back to about the uh, settlement of Taiwan in the uh, 17th century, mm -hmm. um, it's been heard that the earliest Chinese settlers have um, worked for the Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, were they already there? before, uh, as a part of the Ming Dynasty, or, or did they go specifically to find jobs to work for the Dutch? Uh, I think those, uh, you, you mean those, Im those Chinese immigration, or? They, uh, the, the, some, um, uh, some paper told us that, uh, Guo Xinga and uh, his father, Zheng Zhilong, is not only um, uh, an, uh, an admiral for, for the Ming Dynasty, but they are, uh, but they are also pirates. So they send many slaves, Chinese slaves, to, uh, to, they have also some communication with the Dutch Dynasty. So they send many Chinese slaves, they have um, trade with the, the Dutch uh, Empire. So they send many Chinese left to uh, to Taiwan to work for the for the Dutch. Is that what you want to know, or if I answer you the question? Yeah, basically, I just wanted more information about what what the Chinese, the earliest Chinese settlers in Taiwan yeah. were like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Is that the question, or I answer you the question? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, just sort of to give us an idea, can you tell us approximately when the migration pattern between China to Taiwan during this period of time? Uh, what were the when most, if we have any of that information, when most people were migrating? Um, the uh, the mass of the immigration from Taiwan began from the Gosinga um, uh, period, because at that time I think we only have um, less than. 10,000 or 20,000 of Han. Of course, we have, we already have many Chinese Serbs that uh, have a voyage between uh, China and Taiwan. But Gu uh, Xinga, Zheng Cheng Gong, took uh, many people that was uh, loyal for him and for the Ming Dynasty to Taiwan. Gu Xinga have the same, uh, have the same claim as the Kuomintang. At the, at the beginning, Gu Xing, Zheng Cheng Gong came to Taiwan and said that he was uh, the true successor of the Ming Dynasty, and uh, one day they will uh, uh, go back. They will uh, go back to to China. This is ab absolutely the same thing. So it is why that uh, China now is very interested about the uh, the uh, Gosinga history, and they try to find how uh, Qing Dynasty defeat uh, uh, Gosinga at the time. So uh, even China is more interested about the, this period to know what happened there. But the mass of the immigration is from the uh, Qing period. Because, again, um, the kingdom founded by uh, Gu Xinga was in war uh, against uh, China. So we can find many, uh, really a mass, Im uh, a mass immigration. It's only after the Qing dynasty uh, that we have a uh, uh, mass immigration. And uh, most of the so-called Taiwanese Actually, is from the uh, is from the uh, uh, immigrate to Taiwan uh, during the Qing period because we have uh, almost two hundred years uh, of uh, of the uh, of uh, Qing uh, control uh, uh, upon Taiwan. Okay, so it is the history of Taiwan, and we come back uh, to uh, Taiwan. What is Taiwan? His influence, and uh, in the end, we are talking about uh, our democratization, uh, the link between. Uh, uh, the power of Taiwan and uh, uh, her influence. 
What is that? If you understand French, it will be very good. What is that? Yeah, yeah, of course. But it is also a matter, isn't it? You find, of course, it's a European centr uh, centric matter. You have the US here, you have French here, and then you have, um, uh, you have Asia here. And uh, it is it exactly what the map, I mean, the European uh, centric map. But the, pro the problem is that when we see the power of the world, normally we, we take um, a traditional map and we say, ah, the US is very strong because the US is very big. Russia is very strong, it's very big. India is very important, it's very big. China is very important because it's very big. It's just like uh, uh, when, I, when other people see uh, me and you, and uh, you see, oh, I'm very tall because I have, a, uh, because I have one meter, uh, uh, more than one meter 80 uh, centimeter. And uh, immediately you will say that I'm stronger than him. But if he know some other Zhongguo Kung Fu, Chinese Kung Fu, I'm not sure that I will win him. And another thing, is it sure that I win more money than him? Are you so sure? And even in the future, many, because I'm just a, a professor, I, I cannot win so many money, but because he will, be, he will, be, he will become the second uh, Bill Gates. So, but we cannot find it only in looking at uh, the, the direct appearance. It is the same thing for the traditional map. Who said that a big territory, the, a big territory always can make a big country? So we change uh, this traditional thinking, not to see a country as the territory show, show us. So it's from the trade that we made. And from the trade we made, we can find the first one, of course, is the United States. It's the data of uh, 99 the USA, and uh, of course, Germany, Japan, no doubt. But try to find Taiwan. Oh, Hong Kong is very big also. Try to find Taiwan, China. Is it so different? Everyone is, is talking about um, the big China. This is the statistic. Of course, Russia became very small. But try to understand Taiwan. And uh, comparing to Taiwan is even bigger than all the countries of Africa. Where is Central Asia? Where is Central Asia? Uh, uh, Hasak. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Where is Kazakhstan? And you can find so many small countries, not only Taiwan, like uh, Belgium, like uh, Holland, like uh, Singapore. All is very small country. Very nice. They can produce, uh, they can produce a, a, a big, a, a big, uh, um, they can produce a big uh, amount of, uh, of uh, um, prosperity. This one is uh, the same thing, but with another point of view, with uh, uh, the amount of GMP, as you know. GMP, again, you can find the US, the biggest one, the leader of the world. This is Japan, China, and Taiwan. Data of uh, 2001. It's not very far. And uh, you can find the same thing, Hong Kong, uh, Holland, Belgium. China is not so big as we imagine. Of course, the future, I, will, I cannot say. And I, I believe that China will begin, will begin a bigger and bigger. But actually, it's not so big as we imagine. In fact, I can tell you, the US have 33%, occupy 33%. Um, of the prosperity of the world. Japan have uh, 16 or 17 percent. Uh, Germany have uh, 7 or 8 percent. France uh, have uh, 4 percent. No, uh, yeah, 4 percent. 4.5. 5 or 4. China is 4 percent. But you know, California also have 5 percent. So the power of uh, who is the uh, uh, governor of California, Schwarzenegger, is even bigger than Hu Jintao. His economic power is even bigger than uh, Hu Jintao. And Taiwan has 1%. China is 3.8%. Taiwan is 1%. Taiwan is not so small as we, as we imagine. Wow. 
Oh, okay. Uh, we can come back. Okay, with this uh, with this map, uh, Taiwan become uh, become small. Why? Because it's what is the population. So it is true. Also, if you have a big size of population, you are an important country. Uh, the U.S. No, the U.S. is no more the biggest one. You have China and uh, India. How many population we have in in, uh, in China? One point three billion. It is a it is a big problem. Of course, uh, for India. If you add uh, Pakistan, India, and uh, Afghanistan, also you have 1.3 billion. The most important thing is that uh, in year 2025, uh, you have only 55, uh, no, 45, 50 years old. China will have 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion. Imagine 1.6 billion. The size of population. It's the same thing for India. And uh, in two, year 2050, India will depress China. In year 2050, you, still, you are still alive. You have a 70 years old. You will find a, a bigger India because they will have a 1.8 billion of population. 1.8. The same thing for China. With another way, this is a map made by a, Rush, a, a, a professor from Russia. We try to change a little the, uh, the territorial map we, we, we see before. And then we can find. Look, uh, Japan is like a big guy, just like the U.S., because they are very strong in uh, GMP. Uh, but Russia is just someone who, had, who, was, uh, uh, who has no more force. And Taiwan is not so small. Again, the same thing. Look, Africa. We, oh, we already can. We, it, it, uh, Africa seems to disappear in, in the world. This is a military budget. Uh, the major budget we use, uh, I mean the world use, uh, the first one is uh, the, Amer uh, the US, Japan, Taiwan. Japan, uh, Taiwan is this, uh, the tenth of the world, ranking the tenth of the world. So you can find even military, Taiwan is not so weak. Of course, you can say that uh, uh, if we really use uh, all the money in, in the correct uh, uh, way, but look at all the countries before Taiwan. You have the US, Russia, China, Japan, England, France, Germany, uh, India, Israel, and also uh, Saudi Arabia. All the country is considered as, a, as a, um, at least not a weak, a weak country meet, uh, with a military point of view. Why only Taiwan is considered as a very weak uh, military country? Sorry? This? Is it not as spending as a percentage yeah. of GMP? Not a percentage, but as a, a amount. A yeah, yeah, as dollar. It's not a, it's not a percentage. As percentage, we, Taiwan is not so high. I mean, just the, the total amount of uh, the military budget spending. Where is Zhongguo? Zhongguo is uh, the third of the world. It's here. So Zhongguo spend a third. Uh, um, 39 billion, 40 billion. Taiwan spend uh, 10 billion every year. 10 billion, 10 Yeah, 10 billion, yeah, 10 billion. And in technology, you can find, for example, what is the place of Taiwan? For the notebook, uh, we in year in 2002 we occupy 60 61 person. Uh, uh, for example, in LCD, we also uh, LCD uh, uh, we also have a 61 person. Uh, we produce 61 person of the LCD of the world. For the camera, we 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 produce 39 percent of the world. Uh, this is only a only a part of what Taiwan produce. But this is to show that even in high technology, uh, Taiwan also has her place. In the world market, uh, if, you have, if you can have only one person, it's already a very big percentage. But imagine that Taiwan produced 61 percent of the notebook of the world. 61 percent. At the same time of the successful economic reform, uh, the political reform, Taiwan also 
uh, is the pro I mean, in the same time that uh, at the same time of the successful economic reform, the democratization or the so-called political reform of Taiwan was not forgot by the people. In 1977, you have the Zhongli incident. Zhongli incident is that uh, the KMT tried to um, uh, try to uh, um, to make some try to uh, ma manipulate uh, the result of the e election, and th then you have a big uh, a big protest from the population, uh, and they burn uh, the uh, police. Uh, the police station of Zhongli. The most important thing is in 1979, you have the Formosa incident. And then immediately, you have the family of uh, Lin Yixiong killed. His, his mother, his daughter, <coughs> daughters killed by the KMT agents. And then finally, in 1986, you have the creation of DPP. So the democratization of Taiwan uh, the real democratization of Taiwan, of course, we can say is after the Li Denghui, uh, the Li Denghui period. But already, it, but it is not only by Li Denghui. His reform was based by so many, uh, so many uh, 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 reform, or not, it's not reform, but so many work, works made by those, um, those Dangwai Renshi, those Democrats, those liberal. And finally, in 1987, you have the abolition of the martial law, and uh, 1988 for the liberalization of the media. Of course, actually, in, in Taiwan, we will say that the, the media, the media didn't uh, don't do a great work, but I think it's still very important for democracy to show, to give uh, the liberty uh, of, uh, uh, of of their work. 1988, very important. Li Denghui became president of the republic, the first Taiwanese. Uh, uh, to be president. In 1991, the reform of the National Assembly, thanks to all the students who were sit at the uh, Zhongzheng Zhi Tang, Jiang Kai Shek Memorial, it's just after uh, the Tiananmen incident. In Taiwan, it is a movement, if it is a war move, movement of, of the world. Just remember what happened in 1989, 1991. You have the you have the uh, Berlin uh, Berlin uh, war. Uh, 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 after you have the reunification of uh, Germany, and then you have the problem of Russia. So it is a, a long a, a movement. It's a war movement. In China, you have also thousands of students sit down and uh, claim to the reform, but they were killed by the government. In Taiwan, you have the same thing. The difference is that Li Tengwen received them and agree to make some reform. And finally, was the reason that we have the big reform of the, of the National Assembly. All the, all the deputies abandoned their, of course, we give them many money, but abandoned their post. And we have a new assembly. And in 1996, we have the first election of the president by the universal suffrage. Don't forget, 1995, Li Denghui visit Cornell University. Immediately, you have the missile threat, threat by China especially in 1996. In 1996, the missile crisis created the biggest opposition between China and the US. The US sent a two aircraft carrier, which is, which is the biggest, biggest armada since the Vietnam War. And the opposition between the US and China is the biggest since the Korean War. So it is normal that the U.S. Uh, later, the U.S. try to find a way to communicate with China, because a war between China is, and the U.S. is not a good thing, neither for China, neither for for the U.S. Year 2000, KMT lose the central power for the first time, and 2004, the first referenda in the history of Taiwan. We are now now we are in the modern time. So for. For the modern history, Taiwan never abandoned, the people of Taiwan never abandoned uh, the, re the political reform. But the real reform began by the presidency of Li Denghui. And uh, if we, uh, if we uh, um, observe this period, Taiwan only have about uh, 
14, uh, no, 15 years of, uh, uh, of, ex of uh, uh, the experience of uh, democratization. It's not a very long period. You know, France have two, 200 years. The, the US also, also have 200 years. And uh, we only have 15 years. Taiwan is a middle power. I think it's no doubt with all I show you. Uh, uh, say that uh, after the election, uh, we uh, will have some uh, people who are not satisfied for the result and they will take some um, incident. Even that happened, even, even that happened, I would say it will, not, it will not be a big incident. It will be just a small people, they were not happy. It happened. I don't, it exists also some violence in, 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 the, in the US, also in France. But I don't think, I predict it will, nothing will happen. The people will just accept the result. But I, can, I cannot say it will be 100% uh, that nothing will happen. Just like in year 2000, also we had some people uh, went to um, uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, went to a uh, um, uh, Hui, uh, where he live and to protest, to protest the loss, uh, the loss of the of the uh, KMT campaign. The most important thing is that with the experience, uh, the economic experience and the political experience of Taiwan, Taiwan can contribute uh, largely for the world. Why? Look, now the biggest problem of the world. Now, what is the biggest problem? It's a difference between the north and the south. After 50 years, we still have the same problem. With the same problem, we have a, we have six billion, a size of six billion of population in the world. Three billion spend even spend even have even not spend less than two dollars every day. Three billion of the population. It is a very big problem. The, and uh, which country since the past success to have their political reform and economic reform in the, at the same time? Of course, South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, another one, Ireland. Ireland on the past was not very rich. We only have five countries. Another one, look, uh, France uh, or uh, uh, the US, uh, Japan was already a superpower in, at the end of 1950. Japan lose the war, but before 1950, Japan was a big country. Germany also the same thing. The superpower in 1950 was the same, were the same, comparing to the 21st century. The new rising industrial country was the five countries I, I just told you. So we are in, we are we are faced with a big problem, and the, the size of the population is growing in in the world. How we can how we can uh, find a resolution for this problem. And I think the experience of Taiwan is a very good experience. Also, of, of course, I don't say to, to uh, take the model of Taiwan and put in other countries. We can never use a model of the country for other one. But the experience can be, uh, can be taken, can be took. China need to play an important role in the world. But China need other countries to, to tell her how to develop. China now have two models. One is Taiwan, another one is Singapore. And uh, we don't think that the, the model of Singapore is a good model for them. But Taiwan, I think ta the model of Taiwan is a good model. And uh, even some, sc some, uh, scholar in, uh, uh, some scholar in in China say that what happened today in Taiwan will be the future of China. So I, I believe that uh, our experience uh, and uh, the what we can contribute to the world is the success of the democracy of Taiwan. And uh, not only it will be the guarantee of a democratic China, but also uh, it will contribute to those uh, uh, poor countries that, st that still now have so many problems uh, uh, in the world. So it's what, uh, what I, I want to say today. Thank you very much. Uh, we're opening the time up for Q&A, so just uh, mm -hmm. okay. uh, before we do that, uh, let's take a five-minute break. Yeah, I think <laughs> take a five-minute pause. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. Hi. Uh, just on the timeline, I'm very interested in the details. Um, Hong Singa 
you said Qing defeats Kongxi in 1683, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kongxi that defeats. Uh, we oh, we can have those. Kosinga. Oh, 1661. Yeah. Right. I guess my question is, so the Qing occupied or defeated Kongxing in 1683. Yeah. And then you said that later on they fought a war with France. When was that? It is that um, France, we have a war with France. I think it is in uh, 1889, around that date. I'm not so sure. But I thought that was when they fought Japan. No, in 1895, they fought Japan. They fought Japan, okay, so but before four, the war, years early, yeah, but... four, five years before, they tried to fight uh, the fought uh, France. So, at what time did the Qing Dynasty claim Taiwan as part of theirs? Oh, since uh, since they, they defeat uh, uh, Kosinga, okay, so Taiwan so has become a part of China, okay. but they just consider Taiwan not really a part of China. They want to take control of Taiwan. And they even try to abandon Taiwan at the time. Right. But uh, one uh, general of uh, from Taiwan said that Taiwan is very important. Uh, Qing, uh, it is uh, not a good idea that uh, Qing abandon Taiwan. So, so they keep least... Taiwan, but they don't really try to uh, make Taiwan as a real province of of China. But if we use paper, just uh, treaties, paper, etc., that doesn't. That's one way to look at history, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, because you can go both ways. You can say paper, or you can say the the, the living experience. Yeah, yeah, the people, yeah, 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 yeah. If we go by purely paper documents, yeah. then China, uh, uh, Taiwan was a part of China since 1661. Right. No, since, no, since 1683. 1683, yeah. 1683 till, yeah. S- till for 200 years. Yeah, 200 years, 1895. We can say that. And then from 1895, Japan ruled to yeah, 1945. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was a four year period in which the occupying force came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then, okay. Then you, you have uh, so the it modern. It is fair to say then that at one time in history, China, Taiwan was a part yeah. of China. Because Qing is a part of the history of China. Right, right, right. But you have a nuance uh, uh, in that because at the beginning of the, I mean, at the end of the Qing Dynasty, the claim of Republic of China is to say that the, the Manchu is not Han. Right. So we should make a, a revolution to put the Manchu away right. and uh, to recontrol China. Right. But that by whole the whole idea of Han, that's such a, a myth yeah, in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I totally agree with you. So, we can say Taiwan is a part of China. I think it's, uh, it's okay on the path. But if you look at uh, the, uh, all the map I show you, uh, the Sui Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty, mm-hmm. do you yeah. remember? Uh, look here. Look, Vietnam was really a part of China. Mm-hmm. Han, Sui. Vietnam was a part of China. Mm-hmm. Tang. Look here. Uh, Vietnam is a real part of China. But According the, to the history, right. But the difference in Vietnam was when, you know, after uh, after the French were defeated, yeah. or after the Japanese were, were brought in, and then the Japanese left, and then the French came back. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a whole once but, again. But, but the point I want to say that the, Taiwan became became a part of China only uh, in the 17th century, but yet Vietnam since. Uh, Thousand years uh, before was really a part of China. Right, right. But they and fought a war. Yeah, 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 they, of course. But it's the same then. thing for Taiwan. Mm-hmm. China lose the war and the sign a treaty and abandon, abandon Taiwan. If every empire claim their territory uh, according to the historical, uh, uh, historical point of view, we will have no peace. Right, right. But the difference right now is that there's been technically no declaration or, or statehood granted to Taiwan, yeah. so China can still can make this claim. Whereas in Vietnam, you know, Ho Chi Minh comes, defeats, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, so he yeah, can yeah, yeah. declare a new republic or a new, new country. The problem also is that uh, Vietnamese at the time dare to say that they are not a part of China. In Taiwan, right, they dare to say. We, we, 
you, we have pressure from uh, from uh, the U.S., uh, from Japan, right, from right. every every uh, foreign country. Right. And also, you, you should you should you should know that uh, we are no more in the 17th, 18th, 19th century that uh, we dare to use war. To but we do. Look at the U.S. Uh, it's, a, it's a little different. <laughs> right, 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 right. I think it's a little different. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. On your, um, the maps were showing the disparate size. Yeah. They also had different colors. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't explain that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the map, oh, I saw this magazine, but 12, can we get it? I mean, it this, is a. This mm. says I guess order the magazine. <laughs> it, is a, it is a production for the uh, Wen Jianhui, you know. Wen Jianhui is a minister of. Right, it's a commission of uh, cultural affair. Cultural affair. Yeah, so cultural okay, affair. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I said, or even I can send you. Can just you? just leave me uh, your, uh, your email address. Uh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, the, Kevin, write down your email address and I will send you uh, um, okay. the, right, those. Okay, thank you. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The best thing is that uh, you send uh, your, right. you send to me. Okay, all right. And I, I just uh, uh, the other use uh, the second one, okay? Second one, right here. Second one, yeah. Okay, okay. So you do. Thank And you. I will reply you. Okay, thank you. Great, great, great. Okay, okay, I will re explain again. No problem. So you, you just ask the question again, I will answer them, okay? Okay. So I, I I will also because some uh, people uh, ask someone ask me what means the color. If you have red color, for example, in this map, this is uh, um, on, um, the prosperity of the world. Normally, if you are red, it means you are in the same time you are very rich. A country can be calculated by the total GMP of the country. The, the total GMP means the force of the country. But a small country, you can never compare to a big country. So we also try to find uh, um, uh, 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 the prosperity of, uh, of, of the people. So we, we say GMP per head. So for those countries who has a red color, it means also they have a very high GMP per head. So we can find, for the European country, the US, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, have a very high the GMP. But China, of course, is the power of the world because it's a big country. But for, if, we, if we try to calculate their GMP per head, it is normal. It is normal a big country, but became very poor. It means the the quality of their life is not good. Of course, if you go to Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou, it's very nice. But but try to try to imagine how many people live in Beijing, Shanghai. They have 1.3 billion of population. At most, at most, you have 10 million. No, not uh, 100 million. It's already very good. If you try to go to inside China, you will find a problem, a very big problem. If you go to Beijing, Beijing is very, very nice. I was there last year. And uh, many reporters also uh, now is in Taiwan, uh, is, uh, now is in Taiwan, uh, tell me that Beijing is wonderful. 
the new airport of uh, Shanghai is just made by Japan, financed completely by Japan, but no Chinese know that. Completely financed by Japan. Foreign country also, especially Japan, try to help China. So in the big in big city. So in, in Shanghai, in Beijing, is one it's even better than Taipei, I think. But when you go to really inside China, you will find big problem. You have so many protests every day, every day. No, nobody know about it. Look the uh, ethics scandal at Henan. At Henan. So thousand of Chinese was condemned by uh, by the AIDS problem, and now it's million of of uh, Chinese who have uh, AIDS problem. So um, uh, in China, it's the same thing as in India, a big country. We can see that here, not a century. It's not a century equal as a good as a guarantee of a good uh, um, standard of life uh, inside the country. So here, Australia, you can find Singapore. So it is color of, of this one. And uh, another one. Uh, if you have a deep blue, it's, it is, it, no. If you have a, a deep blue, it's not, it means that the, we still have to pause. We, um, the, that the country is not so open in uh, in trade uh, in economy, you can find the United States also protect them very 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 much. So the U.S. is uh, is very often accused by the uh, European Union in uh, in the WTO, also by uh, Japan. So a big country is not essentially a country is so open as we imagine. Those countries that is very open is Belgium, Singapore, Malaysia. Taiwan has no data. Why does not mean is the is the best one? But you can find Hong Kong. Free, you have free tax here. Uh, this is not so important, I think, for the uh, for the open degree of uh, of the country. Uh, let let us find another one. And uh, for this one, uh, if you have a red one, it means that in in a very short period, uh, the size of the population. Will begin begin a double. You have a du you have the double of the size of the population. So you you find you can find that even India and China, the, the population is still grow st uh, grow is, is still growing. It is not growing so quickly as the p the country in Africa, but because China have a big size, a, a big base of of the population, uh, they are growing very quickly also. 1.3 to 1.8 is not a double, but still, if you have 500 million of population, it is very, it's already a big size. Okay, this is a question. There. So, um, one of the important, I think, factors in, in deciding sort of economics um, and trade is, is the potential uh, for future growth of, of China, course, of course, of the market. Um, of course. What are the special I think a lot of us know what some of these things, but what sort of are, if you can enum enumerate some of the special circumstances and factors which makes China so special um, as, a, as a potential future market? Why, why are they so special? Why is everyone so excited about them? Why so? <laughs> I'm not an economist, but um, with some with some conversation I have uh, with uh, the foreign reporter who came, and also with uh, my my all my other uh, with all my other friend, we think that China's success to create a Chinese dream, like American dream. So now, every so many people think that if we invest now in China, we can win money very quickly. But again, the the open of China uh, began in 1978. Now already we have uh, more than 20 years of the growing of the Chinese uh, of the Chinese uh, economy. Still, China is not so big, uh, not with this one. So, th the more the most important that if the Chinese dream is true or not, and. Uh, if you want to know the answer, you have you have two uh, two theory, the theory of uh, 
uh, of the collapse of China and the theory of, uh, of the growing of China. I think it will be difficult to say what is the, the specific point that make that, that success to have so many investment in China. It's very, it will be very difficult to, to, to answer you in a so short time. Mm. I think one of the one of the uh, main reason is that uh, because China on the past is really a very poor country, but don't forget uh, on the history China is a is a is a center of civilization. So, so I say I I just told you China should find her place in the world. China need to play an important role. So they they just. Uh, Refined their place on the path. Um, last year, when I visit China, I I, I I have a conversation with a very big uh, um, scholar, a Chinese scholar, economic scholar, for the economic uh, history. He told me even now that we think that China is a big power, but don't forget. I just tell you some uh, some statistic, statistic that actually, with the GMP, China has four percent of the world, but. When China was in the end of the Qing Dynasty, it, is, it means that China, in his weak, in a very weak period, China still occupied 6.8 percent of the GMP of the world. So it means even in the Qing period, China is stronger than now, actually. So China, what China is doing now, is just recover her place on the past. But if they don't do their political reform, if if China can, if China can continue uh, this uh, uh, this growing uh, this growing up of uh, of their GMP, we don't know. Uh, but I, I, I'm I'm sure that uh, until 2008, uh, there will be no problem. What what will happen in 2008? China will have their Olympic game. Olympic, Olympic game. Until that date, uh, we believe that this confidence will continue, and uh, we still we still will find we, we will we, we will continue to find. Um, uh, the growing up uh, of the of the Chinese economy. Can you show this uh, previous slide of um, China and Taiwan, and you said the ocean and the sea. Yeah. Taiwan from the eastern side of Taiwan. East of the, the ocean. ocean Were you trying to infer that uh, at one point in time China and Taiwan were landlocked? Uh, but this is a long, long time ago. <laughs> it's a million years ago. Of course, uh, I agree with that. But it's millions of years ago. Uh, I, it is just a strategical point of view to show you that uh, the maritime way between Taiwan and, and China is only a, it's just only a, a Chinese sea. It's not a big ocean. And, uh, to maneuver in the big ocean, you need a deeper, a deeper uh, ocean, and uh, it's to, to show you the military point of view of uh, of Taiwan, the military importance of Taiwan. Yeah. Um, I think in your presentation, the theme has appeared to be that Taiwan is doing pretty well for herself, and yeah. that we're fairly stable in the world. Yeah, place. yeah. Um, but then I also know that. A lot of international investments have mm -hmm. either um, left or have stopped coming. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. So, what do you think um, are some of the reasons for that? And then also, given the factors that we looked at, um, which of the factors, if improved, would then encourage more um, foreign investments to return? Um, I think it is true that um, many investments leave Taiwan to China. But but at the same time, also we got um, uh, much uh, new investment to, to Taiwan. I mean, this movement is just normal in in the world development. If you if you don't if you not only mention Taiwan, also many investment left uh, Korea and uh, went to China, left uh, Japan to China. Why the U.S. the same thing? What what is the main problem now between uh, the U.S. and the uh, and the uh, um, and the China? Not only the problem of the money. But the U.S. accused, not, not the government, but many, uh, many, uh, 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 many people in the U.S. accused China that because they have very, very cheap uh, 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 men, uh, uh, 
manpower in uh, man in manpower. So so many enterprises from the U.S. Uh, delocalized, uh, delocalized to, uh, to 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 China. It is the same problem of Taiwan. If Taiwan is now in a world competition game, how we can survive for those uh, uh, for those people? In China, you can find here you need to pay. Uh, for a worker, you need to pay uh, more than two thousand U.S. dollar every every month. But if we go to not two thousand, one thousand, one thousand U.S. dollar every month. But when you, when you go to China, you only need to pay one hundred. So the localized problem is happen not only in Taiwan. Just look uh, uh, our uh, the rising of the GM, the the percentage of the rising uh, of the our economic growth. Only in 2001, we have a recession, but Taiwan actually recovered the growth of uh, the GMP. Now we have uh, uh, around the four or five percent. Uh, less, uh, 2002 is three percent. It's not so bad comparing to the U.S. And uh, our unemployment now is uh, uh, between uh, four and five percent. Look how many how, the, the, how many we have in uh, in France, ten percent. In Germany, eleven percent. In Singapore, also five percent. In Japan, five percent. So the economy in Taiwan is not so bad as we learn. Of course, not as good as we have on the past, because on the past we are a, we we are a, a developing country. A developing economy always can have a very good uh, growth of uh, the economy, just like just uh, China have uh, actually, or India have also uh, actually, or even Eastern Europe. But now Taiwan is always an industrial country. So to have, if we compare to Japan, to South Korea, to the U.S., to those European countries, I don't think we have a very bad economy. It's just normal. And uh, from a um, from a Green Party point of view, if we have a too high growth of economy, we just use uh, too much the resource of the earth. It's not really good for the new generation. So I think uh, the growth, uh, the economic growth we have actually is not so good. I, I prefer to have a four, five percent. Percent, it is more normal to have an eight percent every year. We just enter to a, a, a very, very, uh, cru very difficult economic competition. And just imagine if China continue to have eight percent or ten percent of economic growth, how many oil they will use in the future? If the Earth can produce so many oil, is India and China have the same speed of economic growth? Just imagine that every Chinese have a car. Every Chinese have a, every Indian have a car. What will happen? So it's also the the problem of the U.S. To rethinking that your way of that our way of of life. Can we continue to use that? And what will other people will think about us? I'm just wondering, in terms of um, China's disinterest in Taiwan, up to the point of when they started fighting the French, mm -hmm. uh, why all of a sudden they were willing to fight against the French for Taiwan? It's not, it's not fighting the French for Taiwan. Or the French want to take Taiwan, so they fight, they fought China. At that time, so it's not uh, the, the French, England is, it did the same thing. Okay, so for China, it was well, defending, I mean, they annexed it. Why did they want to annex it? Um, of course, China uh, def was def uh, defended Taiwan at the time. Uh, so it is uh, the history is that those colonial power came to Asia to find a new uh, way to have trade uh, with China, and they find uh, they found that Taiwan is a very good place uh, uh, to uh, to have trade uh, with China. And uh, to uh, to have a place uh, uh, to stay for for their sailor. France was not only interested uh, was not only interested uh, um, uh, to Taiwan, but also to Indochina. So they, they make a war. They made a war against China. The result, as I said, we don't know. But in the treaty, China abandoned uh, Indochina. Because if we look again, uh, all the map I show you, uh, the history map of China, you can find that Vietnam is a part of China. 
thousand years ago, for the history, Vietnam has only been a part of China, only until the French occupation, or only after uh, the, the French arrival uh, to, um, uh, to China. Then uh, Vietnam changed uh, change their uh, uh, sovereignty. So the result is that um, China abandoned Indochina, it means uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, to France, and the France abandoned Zilong, uh, the north of Taiwan. To, it's not abandoned, but uh, uh, agreed to retreat uh, from the north of Taiwan. So is it, is the history is. Is that your question? Not really, because I mean, do you have any conjectures or hypotheses according to like why? Um, I mean, I understand this whole you know shift in terms of who's controlling what. Yeah. You know, and I mean, as a political scientist, or yeah. you know, do you do you think if you don't, it's fine. I mean, if you don't know or have any hypotheses about why, you know, this it would come to this point about behind. Um, the reasons why they would shift these um, different, you know, control of power in these areas, then you know, that's that's my question. Yeah, um, friend, for, what is the French French interest in the region? To have some place to ha to um, uh, to have more territory, and uh, in defeating China, they can have a more uh, they can have more uh, more territory. And they, they, the, the French uh, uh, Empire need uh, to have more territory also in, in Asia because it is a, res it is a source of, uh, uh, of, uh, their, uh, of what they can get uh, from Asia. I, I don't know the question. I'm asking about China. That was important. Why, <laughs> Why do they Why? defend it? If they don't care about France or if they don't care yeah. about Taiwan, why defend it? When I say that they don't care about Taiwan, it's true that uh, at the beginning they don't care about Taiwan. But um, I, I, I didn't, to, to, uh, didn't tell you that it is only at the beginning they didn't care about Taiwan. But still, when they didn't care about Taiwan, still some generals say that Taiwan has some strategic importance. So I just told you that after the war uh, between France and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, China, Taiwan immediately became a province of China, because they refined it. Just because fr the the arrival of France, they they began to think that ah Taiwan is very important to defend Taiwan. So we can find we can find the, the changing of the status of Taiwan after the French uh, after the war after the war between uh, China and uh, Taiwan. Uh, and then after the war between uh, China and uh, France, and uh, before the reason why they defend Taiwan, uh, why they defend Taiwan, we, we can say that uh, even Taiwan is not important, but it is a, a part of China. So even it, uh, the same problem can be asked. Uh, uh, you know the uh, the island of Diao um, uh, Tai. Why Diao Tai is important? Or it's still not found. We everybody, everybody says that we have oil in Diao Yutai. It's true or not? I, I will not say it's not true, but it's not proof. China want to defend Diao Yutai. Taiwan, nobody lives there. But it is a question of the of the, the uh, proud of, of of China. They lose the war. They need to defend the, the, the territory. Um, I, I don't know if I can convince you, but uh, uh, very very uh, very very quickly, when China, Taiwan is already is already began a province of of uh, Taiwan is already began a, a province of China in 1895 when Japan defeated uh, Taiwan, but when Cixi the uh, the Emperor Cixi Cixi Taihou asked uh, the Prime Minister the Premier Li Hongzhang, when you signed your treaty with uh, Japan, you say you will abandon Taiwan, but Cixi Taihou asked uh, the Emperor uh, uh, asked Li Hongzhang where is Taiwan. You know what Li Hongzhang, how Li Hongzhang answer Cixi Taihou? Taiwan is You know what means "鸟不语花不香 Even the, the bird don't sing in, in Taiwan. The, the flower not flourish in Taiwan. So for, for Cixi Taihou, he even, she even don't know where is Taiwan. 
to, to prove that Taiwan is not, is not so important from the point of view of the Chinese. But still, for some general, Taiwan is important. So Taiwan became a province in, in 1889. So I think it's still, uh, when I say don't take care so much of Taiwan, it's not mean don't care any, I mean, it's not it's mean Taiwan is nothing. But comparing to other provinces, Taiwan is not so important as other provinces. Uh, yeah, this one. Ma'am. No, I just want to uh, say something about that uh, Francis question. Uh, my hypothesis that I, I could be wrong, but uh, I would think that at that time, uh, the, the provinces along the coast, all right, they were very poor, and they have the chance. They had chance to contact with the, uh, uh, the other side of the world. So they probably would like to think that, that Taiwan is a very good stepping stone for those people along the coast in China Sea, uh, along the coast of Taiwan Strait. Uh, that's a, a Taiwan was a, uh, in a very important stepping stone, uh, mm. considering to do all the trade, foreign trade, something like that. So uh, would that be the reason that at that time uh, Chinese government tried to defend Taiwan, Taiwan. from French invasion? Or would that be possible? I, I don't know. Just, I'm not there. But I, I think it just happened a war between France and uh, China. France want to uh, defend, uh, France want some territory Indochina or Taiwan, and finally they decide to uh, to have uh, Indochina. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah uh, I have something to say. I'm not asking a question. Okay? Yeah. But uh, since uh, Frank, Frank. 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 like the Frank. mayor of uh, of Kaohsiung, Frank. Fred. Oh, Fred. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned about uh, the, the mass migration of Chinese people to Taiwan. And you mentioned, uh, you, you, you said that as uh, Guo Xingye, huh? Mm, Guo Xingye, Zheng Cheng Gong. At that period of time. Yeah, he, is, uh, he was a rebel kind of uh, to Qing Dynasty, right? Mm. He didn't want to surrender to Qing Dynasty. Okay. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I have been thinking that I didn't want to say this, but, but, I think now I have to say something about this. Okay, I, 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 I spoke to Steve this morning. I am the direct descendant of Zheng Cheng Gong. <laughs> oh, okay. He was, he was my grand, 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 grand father. But anyway, uh, I was educated to be proud of him yeah. when I was in Taiwan. You know that. Uh, Taiwan's yeah. educated yeah. Uh, by Gomin, by, by mm. KMT, mm. right? Mm. So, uh, yeah, I always. Well, well, first, uh, first I went to the United States, and in the uh, early years of my United States uh, study period of time, I was proud of myself that uh, I have a, a noble uh, blood in my. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, not Japanese. Uh, but but the mother of Zheng Cheng Gong is Japanese, huh? Yeah, mother's. Uh, Zheng Cheng Gong. If you look at Taiwan's position from the global view and different point of views. Then you will, uh, you will be proud of Taiwan that um, uh, be a good country is not necessary that you have a big land, big territory, or you have millions of people, billions of people there. The important thing is the quality of life and the quality of people, all right? So, uh, I think, yeah, uh, we just have to have faith in Taiwan, no matter what. I think we are all descendants of uh, Zheng Cheng Gong, the army bring by Zheng Cheng Gong, the well, people really, bring by... Well, you consider at that time, uh, a lot of aborigines movement... So we also have uh, some... Uh, because the, the yeah, people yeah. bring by Zheng Cheng and yeah. after I didn't say the story, but after me, the people who success to come to Taiwan right. is very few. and. Uh, the majority of them was a uh, man. 
So they need to marry the aborigin. Right. So we are all the descendant of those Chinese uh, who immigrate to Taiwan and those abor aborigin. And yeah. even me, I, maybe I have also the, uh, yeah. the blood of uh, the Dutch. Uh, you right. have so high. So, um, no, it's not <laughs> You can find. My father is also very, very tall, very tall. I'm so tall. Yeah. So, so maybe um, also I have the brother of, of the Dutch yeah, people. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. Um, usually we don't allow comments in Q&A sessions, and I just okay. want to get things moving because we only have a short time. So yeah, I mean, okay. feel free to carry this yeah, conversation what, afterwards. Yeah, that's what I have so, to say now. Okay, okay thank thanks. you. For him, because he, he never answered. Um, sorry. <laughs> Which sorry, one? You, you have a question? And then I'll have, I'll take uh, Jing and then Steve. Uh, sorry, but I just wanted to um, kind of reconcile a statement you made earlier about um, Zun Teng Gong um, having um, a close trade relationship with Dutch. You said that he had brought over um, Ming loyalists, people that he could trust, as well as. Um, Chinese slaves, hmm. and from my understanding of history, um, the uh, large population eight, um, of Fukunese didn't start immigrating until the Qing Dynasty, and the earlier portion of the uh, Chinese settlers were predominantly Hakka. Mm -hmm. So I was hmm. just wondering if you were trying to, if I could conclude that Zun Tseng Gong had brought Hakka slaves, and if uh, to be so clear, really, if Zhe Cheng Kong bring Hakka slave, I will not say that. He, he, he brings the people from Fukien. And um, if the majority of them are Hakka, yes or not, I'm not so sure. And uh, the slave uh, he bring he bring to uh, to uh, he he trade to he trade with the Dutch dynasty. It's not the majority. The majority is the people. He's uh, the follower, the follower of uh, Zheng Cheng Gong, and then, then uh, essentially, uh, in the Qing period, in the Qing period, the people who live uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, west, uh, east, uh, eastern side of China, who who live not very good, uh, and try to find a new world, as just like uh, the ancestor of uh, the U.S. Uh, they don't live very very well in in uh, England in Europe, so they go outside to find a new world. This is the same phenomenon that pro that have that produced uh, in uh, uh, in the Qing Dynasty. Those Chinese uh, who live uh, in the in the, uh, in the eastern side of China was faced to so many war in uh, in, in 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 China and uh, lo have lost everything. So they try to go to to go to Taiwan, not only Taiwan but also Malaysia, Philippines. So now you have so many Chinese also in uh, Malaysia, Philippines. You know, in the war of uh, um, of the rebellion of Taiping Tianguo. Do you know how many people died in China? In 19th century, you have two big wars. One is the Taiping Tianguo, the rebellion of, of China. Another one is um, uh, um, uh, the Civil War of U.S. But the Civil War of U.S. is to defend, uh, is to defend uh, um, um, a, be a believing, to liberalize uh, the slave. In China, it's just uh, two power, and uh, uh, we will not enter the detail. But 20 million Chinese dead in that war. 20 million. How many? How many people died in the first World War One? In, in the World War One, 20 million. How many people died in uh, World War Two? 40 million. And only in 19th century, you you already have 20 million Chinese dead in the Civil War. So, in in the history of China. You have you can find so many wars. The people don't really live uh, very good. If you when we look at the glory of uh, Qianlong, Kangxi, of uh, this uh, of this uh, uh, emperor, it's on, it's always based on the sacrifice of the people. Because in China you have, you 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 already have so many people. Okay, that answer you. So, but the Hakka people were earliest settlers in. I don't really know the history of Hakka. I, I need to recognize it. To, to be really under detail, who is the slave that Cheng Cheng Gong uh, bring when he traded with the Dutch people? OK? <laughs> Maybe I will find something and I will answer you. I will ask my friend. Uh, hello. Um, I don't know if this is particularly your 
your field. Um, yeah. But I was, uh, I was hoping you could um, talk a little bit about what you believe is the future um, economic status of Taiwan. Now, yeah. we know that um, Taiwan, it's upgrading to obviously high-tech industries yeah. to compensate yeah. for the manufacturing loss. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you have the uh, the proposition um, of a free trade agreement um, between Korea, Japan, and Taiwan, yeah. uh, China, China, or like a free trade business block or something like that, um, that is based a lot on, you know, the political circumstances between these three countries. Mm. Um, so what so, you know, in that kind of circumstance, where is Taiwan's position in that? Um, because it can't politically maneuver itself around um, this free trade business block. And, and what do you, how do you think it can um, sustain its viability in the future? Yeah. It seems that now uh, the, the FTA is uh, beginning the, the, the trend, uh, the main trend of the future, because every country wants to sign the FTA. Um, ASEAN country also we became a, uh, an FTA zone in in 2010. Um, Taiwan tried to sign the FTA, want, uh, have the ambition to sign the FTA with Japan, Singapore, or the U.S. But we are faced with a very big uh, uh, opposition from China. Um, um, I, I I think uh, it will be very difficult to really sign uh, uh, FTA with other, with other country if China, if we have not the uh, comprehension of China. But don't forget also Taiwan is a part of uh, APEC. Right. The future of APEC is also to make uh, the zone of Asia Pacific as an F FTA zone. And uh, the most important thing that is Taiwan is a part of WTO. W the, the, the future idea of WTO is make the world as an FTA. So, the the global FTA, uh, hoping by WTO, will be made uh, one by one, uh, signed by uh, every country. Of course, I don't know when Taiwan will success, but the, when we see uh, um, uh, the in the 19 and the, uh, in the end of the 20th century and the 21st century, as I say before, we don't see uh, that the economy of Taiwan is becoming worse. We don't really see that. It's just because we are not so good as in 1980, 1970. But it doesn't mean that Taiwan is become very bad. I just said, don't compare Taiwan to China. We are in very diff different situation. Don't compare Taiwan with uh, those countries in Eastern Europe. Or don't compare Taiwan with Malaysia. Malaysia is still, or Indonesia or Philippines is still in, in a state of developing country. You should compare Taiwan to Korea to Japan, to France. And then you will find that we still have a very high, high energy of economic development. I didn't mention everything. But the, we, we have no proof. Look, uh, even the, uh, uh, the stock market of Taiwan recently. It's, it's recovered very quickly. Every economic statistic, statistic prove that uh, the economy of Taiwan uh, is still very energy, uh, have very much energy. So I, I, I don't, I'm not pessimist for, for the future of Taiwan. I'm not very pessimist. I cannot give you all the statistics, but uh, if you try to, uh, to, uh, to uh, have some conversation to other uh, economists in Taiwan, you will find, but try also not, not for the Pan Blue Party, uh, try to, to have uh, some um, uh, uh, conversation for the true, for example, Chen Bozhi, for the Taiwan, uh, Taiwan think tank. Uh, he will tell you that uh, actually uh, we uh, we uh, very successfully we 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 still uh, have our economy energy. The most important thing, for example, the three links. Everybody said uh, China will absorb uh, all the economy energy of Taiwan, but the three link actually it means that we already open all our industry to China, except uh, uh, for example the Taiji Dian semi uh, in the industrial uh, uh, semiconductor industrial. But this one is our is the most important industry of Taiwan. Actually, we need to keep it in Taiwan. But except except the semiconductor uh, industry and some uh, industries that concern uh, military secret, every every uh, industry is permit to go to China. And uh, we still have some growth in Taiwan. So it proves that 
I, 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 it proves that uh, our economy is still functioning, is still functioning very well. So I, I, I think uh, uh, the, the most important thing is unemployment, the growth. Uh, another one is the uh, foreign reserve. You know, the foreign reserve uh, um, in in year 2000, we, we only have 18 billion US dollar. Actually, we have 200 billion. So in four years, uh, we double our foreign reserve. What is the foreign reserve? It is the money we win in, in trading with other countries. And uh, we keep uh, eight, uh, 80 billion of foreign, US dollar of foreign reserve for 10 years. I mean, since the Li Denghui period, we, 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 we stay at, uh, we stay at uh, 80 billion, 70 billion, 80, 90 billion for 10 years. But since uh, 2000 to 2004, now we have 200 billion. It's a very big uh, progress. Now we still keep the, we still rank the third of the world. The first one, the first one is Japan, second one is, is China, and the third one is Taiwan. And don't forget why China have so many uh, foreign reserves, because they also have a big debt. Their debt is equal to uh, their uh, foreign reserve. But Taiwan, we, we have no debt. We, we have th those money is belong to Taiwan. So I think I'm very, very optimist for the economy of Taiwan. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. So in, in 1683, you said that the Qing Dynasty uh, beat out uh, Kong Xinga. Yeah, Kong Xinga. So from 1683 to 1895, when the Japanese took over uh, Taiwan, it yeah. seems on paper to say that indeed Taiwan was a part of China. Uh, yeah, I, I need to be uh, more specifically concerning uh, this history. It's, it means that uh, in 1683, when Qing Dynasty defeated uh, Go Xinga, Zheng Cheng Gong, Taiwan become, uh, became a part of China. It's true. In what perspective? That we consider the Manchu is also uh, a part of the Chinese uh, nation. When we talk about uh, Zhonghua Minzu, uh, don't forget uh, in 1911, um, uh, when uh, Sun, uh, Sun Yat-sen made the revolution, he said that the Manchu is not a part of the Chinese nation. So, what What mean? Uh, that we need to uh, put away the Manchu uh, government, uh, government and uh, to recontrol China by the Pu Han. But it's now, what is the Pu Han? So if Manchu is a part of, uh, of the Chinese nation, then China took control uh, of Taiwan in 1683, and Taiwan became a part of China. But don't forget also that uh, in, 1980, in 1683, the name of China is not China. The name of China is Qing Chao. Nobody is, uh, is referring to China at the time. China is a modern name of the, the people who live uh, in the big territory of China, actually. So um, to be clearly, to be uh, more specifically, Taiwan, um, Taiwan. I can accept that. That Taiwan became a part of China since 1683 until 1895. Uh, no, 1895 until 1895 for more than 200 years, and Taiwan became a, a territory of Japan. So, but so, so uh, Taiwan have been a part of China for 200 years. But for the modern history, for one 100 years, Taiwan only have been a part of China for four years for four years. OK, it's clear? But the first government who controlled Taiwan is not Chinese. It's a Dutch government. And uh, we have Spanish government. And uh, we have Kosinga. Uh, you can <laughs> even we say Kosinga is not pure, uh, is, uh, pure Chinese because his father is Chinese. But I think uh, Kosinga also have some uh, from uh, uh, modern thinking. Kosinga is also a descendant of, uh, of uh, Japan, of Japanese. Do you have five minutes? Five minutes. I'm just curious. Hi, I'm right here. I'm right oh, yeah. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, The people from Fukien, um, I know in China there's different kind of, kinds of quote unquote races. Are they Han people or are they different people? I think they are Han people, the people from Fukien. But the most interesting thing is <laughs> to give uh, you more c confidence is that, you know, the language user. By the Fukienese or by the Hakka, 
is the language using uh, by uh, by the Chinese by the Han uh, hundred years or thousand years ago. What is the proof? If you if is everybody can say Taiwanese here. If you I say the Zhong Hua Ming Gok, what's mean Zhong Hua Ming Gok? Zhong Hua Ming Kuo, the Republic of China. But I'm talking I'm not talking Taiwanese, I'm talking Korean. Zhonghua Ming Gok. Bulihak, what is Buliha? Physic. Bulihak. Buli Xue. In Korean it's Buli Buliha. Hua Hak. Chemistry. I'm talking Korean. Chia Pio. Ticket. I'm to I'm 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 talking uh, Korean. Hong Kong Gi, what is Hong Kong Gi? Airplane. Airplane. So it's very similar comparing to Korean language. And uh, if you count uh, in Hakka, it is almost the same as Korean. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt again. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> just give me two minutes, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, there are the origin of uh, Hokkien is, is Han, right? Which um, I don't think is correct because. In, uh, there's an article yeah. published in Science Magazine in 1989 or 1990, something like that. They uh, uh, did a lot of research from the genes, from DNA, from uh, all kinds of uh, uh, migration data, whatever that, that's a scientific research. They say that uh, Taiwanese origin is, is from uh, uh, South China Sea, China, China Sea. It's aborigin in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, that's aborigin Taiwan, and uh, it's all, all come from uh, it's called uh, Astoria. Astori yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nandao. Nan yeah, Dao, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nandao yeah. I, I just show you also in my in my map. In yeah, the map. and some of the uh, origin of uh, China, South China, uh, how is that? Uh, Yanhai, along the coast of the China, uh, of China territory that. Guangzhou, Hainan, Fujian, those are also from Astonishia, Astonishia uh, species. In fact, it doesn't exist a pure Han. <laughs> Everybody have a several uh, several um, uh, ancestor uh, come from everywhere. I, I, I think your point about um, the Korean language incorporating Chinese yeah. vocabulary words. Um, that was a product of the influx of Buddhist ideals. Yeah, of a Chinese culture, Chinese so, language to Korea. So I, I don't understand how you're saying that just because Koreans. No, it's a proof that because uh, China have been inf uh, Korea have been influenced by China for hundreds of years. If you look at the uh, the uh, the old language of Korean, is Chinese. If you go to Korea, look uh, of uh, look on their. Uh, look of the product of their ancestor. It's all wrought by uh, Chinese language. They only change uh, their language uh, to the modern Korean uh, three or four hundred years ago. So, so it's to prove that at the time, uh, the language using in the center of China is uh, uh, influence is tr uh, strongly influenced uh, uh, Korean. So all the language using by uh, by the people living in the Zongyuan in the center of uh, China, then is the language that we are using actually because it's very similar. You, you know what I mean? If you try, the, the, another proof is that another proof is that if you try to pronounce uh, the the poet of uh, Tang Tang Shi Song Ci, try to use a Taiwanese or Hakka, you will find it sounds very very good. But if you use uh, uh, the Mandarin Beijinghua, it don't sound so good. In fact, Beijinghua is a language used by uh, the people who live in the north of China. It's not really the pure Han. But uh, again, uh, what is the pure Han? The Han, the pure Han, is, uh, for me, it's, it, do, it don't exist. All right, uh, I think that wraps our Q&A session. So okay. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope you have learned something concerning uh, the, the, the slide. Okay.